Hey everybody and welcome to this video. First of all I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that, ever, uh, that watched the first episode of this series. Um, it did really well, it was probably the best performing video on my channel for quite some time now. Um, and I really enjoyed making it. And I hope as well that the uh, this, this, this series will live up to the hype that has obviously been set by the first episode. Um, a special thank you as well to everyone that shared it to their group and obviously got the word out. And hopefully this episode will help you start off with playing the most fashionable target practice for factions with much better politics than these guys. It's the British Union of Fascists. I'm going to have to be quite careful with how I tag this video. I don't want the wrong sort of people coming onto it. Uh, this is purely for wargaming. If you're actually part of the BUF or you like them, feck off. But <laughs> with that uh, quite brutal starter, um, how this series is going to work on from now on is obviously um, going to be how to get into the faction. I'm going to give you kind of two different approaches to actually play it. Uh, this isn't a law video, this is very much buying the models to actually paint up and then play. If you want to learn more about the background, there is a previous video which I'll link. Um, it's the What is 1938 A Very British Civil War. Uh, please watch that. Audio is a bit shite. But again, like I said last time, we're all adults. We can deal with that around here, can't we? Anyway, so with that being said, uh, the two approaches I'm going to take for the BUF is going to be the first one being a kind of motorised proto-Blitzkrieg. BUF Legion being heavily armed, heavily motorised and well equipped um, as is befitting of government troops. Um, and the second approach is going to be much more kind of historically accurate. It's going to be a BUF mob, um, very much relying on quality, quantity over quality, um, lots of men, not very much equipment. Um, again, kind of reflecting the yobbos, I guess. Um, we go on these kind of things and get engaged in that kind of stuff. So, um, I think those very, uh, kind of cover two very interesting um, varieties of the BUF. It gives you a lot of kind of variety and hopefully gives you a really interesting start of force um, for your army. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. So, moving on to the first approach, uh, it's obviously the BUF Legion, uh, the, the mainstay of the fascist armies that are moving up all across the, the disunited kingdom now. Uh, it'll work for any kind of um, for theater, of the theatre of very British Civil War. Um, and for this um, kind of group, Foot Sword Miniatures is going to be your best, best friend. Um, you're going to absolutely love them, you're going to be buying a lot from them, and um, they're going to make a very pretty army for you. So we're going to start off with a kind of standard platoon of three sections plus support teams and a tank. Gives you quite a nice rounded force. It looks pretty on the table. It looks complete and it gives you a very good, um, not, not just a starting point, but an actual very good usable force. So without further ado, we're going to get into the infantry and the HQ. Um, so for this, you're going to want to buy the um, three of the BUF characters pack. That gives you an officer, a banner bearer, a SMG sergeant and a um, legionnaire with a LMG, as well as six of the BUF infantry packs. This gives you three sections of 10, each one with an SMG and an LMG, reflecting a very kind of heavily armed government troops. They've got the access to the storehouses, they've fiddled around here and there with army supplies and come across all this kind of equipment. Um, so you have some quite formidable squadrons there. And it also gives you the officers and the banner bearers with some very pretty flags. Uh, which of course, like I said in the last video, we absolutely love to see. Everyone loves a pretty flag. And although, you know what, um, the BUF might not be the best people out there, but they're definitely quite stylish and the flags live up to that. So that gives you your mainstay there. That's, uh, that's nine packs you're going to be buying from them. Um, and I'll give you a kind of price total towards the end of it. But that's going to be a very solid foundation. You probably won't have to build up too much off that. Uh, in terms of expansion as well, you could replace one of these squadrons with some BUF cavalry for a more kind of rural, less motorised force, kind of reflecting the fact that they're a bit out of the sticks, they might, have access, they might not have the access to like as much petrol or the me uh, mechanical supplies or the engineers, that kind of thing. Or if you really wanted to, you could also incorporate German foreign legions. Um, uh, in, in terms of the law, Hitler and Mussolini were too busy focusing on the continent uh, to get into Britain. But if you really wanted to, you could throw some Germans in there. I know I, I definitely have. But anyway, we, we, we will stick to the standard. I won't go into those too much. Those are some little kind of branching off ideas you could do. In terms of support teams, uh, you're going to want to get the BUF Heavy Machine Gun. Again, by Futsaw. It gives you three figures there with a, a very nice Vickers machine gun. Not too powerful in terms of bolt action. 
but machine guns are cool. They're very thematic and they look good. Um, you're also going to want to get the Universal Mortar 2, a very interesting name, uh, by Empress Miniatures in their Spanish Civil War range. Um, and it's not strictly very British Civil War, but you'll see a lot of overlap between these two kind of ranges and, um, and, and periods. They have very similar uniforms. Uh, all you'll really need to do is just chop off the, ta the tassel on front of their um, of their forage caps, and you have a perfect looking BUF mortar there. Transports. Um, I'm going to save these as kind of like a last thing. These are probably going to be one of the last things you buy, just because you don't really need them so much. It does give it a little bit more of the flavour. Um, just browse through the Empress Miniatures Spanish Civil War tanks and vehicles section. You'll come across a load of excellent improvised armoured vehicles that very much suit um, VBCW. Um, the Militia Armoured Truck um, It's a very nice little kind of rectangular square, square thing with a little turret on it. It's perfect for this. It's very good for a transport. But of course, you could also make your own. Uh, you could buy some cheap Lado die cast trucks, um, stick on some plastic card, and convert to your heart's content. It's much cheaper to do it that way, um, but it's also obviously going to require a bit of hobby skill. So, if you've got the capital and you want to invest it, by all means, go for the Spanish Civil War stuff. Uh, but if you want to get a bit more crafty with your hobby, um, make them make them yourself. And the final category as well, um, we're going to go for a tank. You've got a huge range of options here. You know, you, you could choose Ger uh, German and Italian tanks. I, again, for the reasons before, I wouldn't really go for that uh, because of Hitler's set his eyes on other aspects of the world. Um, but I'll definitely say go for the British interwar tanks. Um, I mean, they just look amazing. <laughs> They're so quirky and boxy and cool. Um, and also you can get them quite cheap as well. So, obviously there's a massive range of British interwar tanks out there, but I'm going to recommend one for you. It's going to be the Vickers Medium 2 uh, by Reaver Miniatures. It's quite cheap for a tank, it's 13 quid. Very quintessentially British as well, um, so it's, it's going to look really nice in a black paint job. The model itself is a little bit kind of poor quality, I won't lie to you, uh, but it's very easy to clean up, and again, when it's painted black, it kind of covers, it, it covers up a lot of the... Um, of the mistakes on the model and it'll come out looking really nice but other tanks are available by all means do browse and have a look the Vickers light tanks the Matildas um, all these other kind of things are a cruiser tank could get a few of those uh, I'm just going to stick with the uh, with the medium for now just because it's it's quite stocky like um, like a good British lad should be uh, you might be wondering as well about artillery in terms of the law, uh, the BU have had very little access to artillery. The army, with the, well, the remnants of the British army are very kind of keen to keep their hands on that. So it's going to be your biggest weakness as a BUF player, getting your hands on artillery. But if you've got that manoeuvrability, um, it's going to be your greatest strength. You can kind of outmaneuver the artillery placements, not get yourself looking behind too much and keep yourself on the go. Um, so you might be wondering about the price. All that together, that being the free infantry squads, your officers, your support teams, your tank and your transports, is going to be 137 quid. I've got it down to, uh, but without the transports, it sounds much more reasonable, um, 89 quid. So I don't think that's too bad for what is going to be a very solid army. You're probably going to not want to expand that too much. It should get you through most games. So 89 quid ain't too bad. And of course, you don't have to buy it all in one. In fact, I would not recommend you buy it all in one. Buy it in stages, get yourself used to the scheme, and of course, you can build up from there. Right, so with approach number two, I've labelled this as the fascist mob. It's going to be a much less competitive kind of army, uh, but it will certainly be quite fun with a, a human wave style of combat, um, kind of reminiscent of Enemy of the Gates, so that film was actually accurate. Um, so, Warlord is going to be perfect for this army. They actually have a book deal called the BUF 5th Column, uh, which saves you four quid, it's 41 quid, and it gets you um, two very poorly armed infantry sections, um, a boy's anti-tank rifle, an improvised mortar, an officer with two attendants, and also the bastard in chief, Sir, Ros Sir Oswald Mosley himself. There's a fun little bonus for you there. So again, that's 41 quid, and it gives you quite a solid kind of founding. Um, but of course, uh, with, um, with, with squads that are so under under equipped as these you know that most of them have got cricket bats or like the odd shotgun here and there um, you're going to want to build off that um, so i'd recommend getting one or two extra of the buf action squads uh, just to get a lot more bodies on, on on the field for that massive human wave 
you're going for quantity not quality here as i've already said before um so that gives you uh, we're going to work off there having far, um having four of the infantry squads um, so you have the book deal two of those um, extra squads um, and that gives you quite a solid foundation there it gives you the the infantry gives you the support although it is quite poor quality um, and of course armor as well we all love a bit of armor um, I'll much rather, I'll much rather lean you towards getting the armored cars here um, especially improvised ones just to fit in with that ragtag feel would look a bit weird if you have a, a quite um, under equipped army rolling in with a massive tank um, so getting a, a new, an armored car fits in much more with that once again, you're going to want to go to Empress's uh, Spanish Civil War range. Um, just just look at the ones all there. They're there for your improvised. But also do consider the, the Lanchester Armoured Car and other vehicles from their Jazz Age of Imperialism range and the interwar vehicles. Uh, because in reality, the BUF actually had a Lanchester Armoured Car. I think it's called, or is it Lanchester? I don't think it's Lancaster. I think it's Lanchester, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so the BUF uses armoured car as actually Mosley's personal transport in reality. So, dib, uh, you know, dib and dab into there. There'll be a lot more of armoured cars running around than there are with tanks, probably. Um, so definitely go for one of them, I'd recommend. So as a little round off there, you're going to be getting the book deal, two of the extra action squads, and I, I put down the Lanchester here uh, at 22 quid. So overall, that'll be £93. And uh, again, gives you... Quite a, a, a quite a solid army. Definitely would not want to be charging up against it. You might want to give them the fanatic rule uh, just to make that a, a little bit more kind of sturdy. Obviously, they're blind followers of Mosley and fascism, so they're going to be pretty indoctrinated into it. Um, but again, five squads there. Could be a lot of painting, but should be good fun to play with. Then finally, I'm just going to do a little kind of fun centerpieces section just to add that a little bit more flavour and a bit of a um, a nice sight to look at on the tabletop. The obvious first choice here is, if you didn't go for option two, is Sir Oswald Mosley himself, the bastard in chief. Um, this would offer like a lot of really interesting kind of defend the leader scenarios. Uh, it could be one where it's involving like communist infiltration into one of his mass rallies, attempted to assassinate him, where the goal is to kill Mosley um, at all costs, you know, you'd have to get out alive, sort him out. Um, and also gives you some to uh, and the BUS scheme can be quite simple at times, a lot of dry brushing. Gives you something to get a really nice kind of looking uniform, put a lot more time into it, um, and turn out the other side. Um, you can also use him as well for the Operation Sea Lion game, so it gives you a lot of um, a lot of flexibility there, and definitely one to pick up once you've got a bit of a bigger army. It would look a bit weird if he was leading a kind of patrol, but um, he, he'll look nice um, along, amongst others. And of course, the massive centerpiece, I, I love this tank, it's brilliant. It's the Mark 9, uh, sorry, the Mark 8 uh, Beast tank. It's a huge tank. It's actually the one from Indiana Jones as well uh, in the Last Crusade, uh, you know, it, when they're in the desert. Uh, so it's a Mark 8 with a, a turret put on top. It's huge, it packs a massive punch. It's got the two howitzers in it. The I think it's a two pounder gun, piddly, but pretty good for very British Civil War. And it's definitely the epitome of BUF brutality and might. Really fun to paint. You can slap the slogans on the side, you can put flags on it and stuff and just make it look really cool um, and it'll definitely obviously it'll look much more at home with um, in a bigger force with more tanks in it more armor uh, pushing through to break the lines um, so that is going to be my final recommendation for a fun centerpiece um, and with that I believe that we've come to the end of it um, I hope you really enjoyed this video I hope it helped you out with those two kind of different approaches obviously this isn't gospel my word isn't um, you know isn't written in stone here you can change things here and there obviously buy things in bits don't do it all at once um, because 80 quid is a lot of money I won't lie to you but obviously over time it looks a little bit nice when you're getting a lot for it as well um, so anyway, I hope this was really interesting I hope you keep on following on the series I think next up I'm either going to do the communists or the royalists Probably go royalist, get the government done out of the way, and then go over to those that want to bring it down. Um, the good side of history, <laughs> to be objective there. Um, anyway, so, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.